in Embracing the Wide Sky, I describe how savant minds work and how they are similar as well as dissimilar to non-savant minds. And often we think that savants are like robots, machines, that they do things that are miraculous. We can't possibly imagine how anyone can do anything like it. And in fact, when you think about things like puns, plays on words, when you think about metaphors, um, and the way that they create connections in the brain that are unexpected and which are fascinating uh, and quite complex as well, then you see that there is a similarity there as between how a savant thinks and how someone who isn't a savant thinks because you know, these are phenomena that are widespread and uh, very commonplace and, uh, and I think they do tell us something very interesting about how the mind works. But synesthesia is a condition that uh, involves uh, different parts of the brain talking together in a way that doesn't happen in other brains and uh, it varies. Some people will have a kind of synesthesia in which they see letters as having colours, some will listen to music and and see colours associated with the tones and the, the volume perhaps as well of the music. Um, in my case I see numbers as having shapes and colours and textures. Words as well have emotions and colours attached to them. And uh, synesthesia is much more common in fact than once uh, was believed. We scientists uh, previously thought it was uh, a, a marginal phenomenon at best and in fact it's something that is much more widespread. Some studies put the figure at 5%, maybe even 10% for certain kinds of synesthesia. And in fact there are universal kinds as well when people talk about um, cheese being tasting sharp or about a, a shirt having a, having a loud colour. These are kinds of synesthesia that everyone has.